Imagine who you could be and then aim single-mindedly at that. An unforgettable story captures the essence of humanity and distills, communicates and clarifies it, bringing what we are and what we should be into focus. It speaks to us, motivating the attention that inspires imitation. We learn to see and act in the manner of the heroes of the stories that captivate us. These stories call to capacities that lie deep within our nature, but might still never develop without that call. We are dormant adventurers, lovers, leaders, artists and rebels, but need to discover that we are all those things by seeing the reflection of such patterns in dramatic and literary form. That is part of being a creature that is part nature and part culture. An unforgettable story advances our capacity to understand our behavior beyond habit and expectation toward an imaginative and then verbalized understanding. Such a story presents us in the most compelling manner with the ultimate adventure, the divine romance, and the eternal battle between good and evil. All this helps us clarify our understanding of moral and immoral attitude, personal and social. This can be seen everywhere and always. Question. Who are you? Or at least, who could you be? Answer. Part of the eternal force that constantly confronts the terrible unknown, voluntarily. Part of the eternal force that transcends naivety and becomes dangerous enough in a controlled manner to understand evil and beard it in its lair. And part of the eternal force that faces chaos and turns it into productive order. Or that takes order that has become too restrictive, reduces it to chaos and renders it productive once again. And all of this, being very difficult to understand consciously, but vital to our survival, is transmitted in the form of the stories that we cannot help but attend to. And it is in this manner that we come to apprehend what is of value, what we should aim at, and what we could be. Imagine who you could be and then aim single-mindedly at that. And, and for me, after being on tour with you, um, I think that's something that, that got into me through osmosis, that I would be on stage and even though everyone was there for you, I thought, hey, I'm part of this somehow. This, this thing, somehow I became part of this. And then once I realized that when the PA announcer said my name, that those people knew me, I thought, that I'm me, I'm, I'm the guy they're talking about, like I'm doing something. And then it, that, just that, it helped my aim. It helped my aim. and. I wonder how many people just don't, they don't know how to aim because they have no experience like that. Something like that. Tradition is supposed to teach you by presenting you with examples of great people of the past. The lesson is not supposed to be exactly bow down and worship these people. Mm -hmm. It's be like them, be like them. And you could be. And I mean, that's really the goal of the humanities when it's the humanities. If it's not, if that's the goal, then students will study the humanities. As soon as that ceases to be the goal, then it, it, there's, there's nothing of value there. I mean, great literature tells you, it tells you the great story of good and evil, always. It's good and evil against a background of chaos and order, always. And the evil characters are there to to, to be bad examples and the good characters are there to be good examples or you see the interplay of those forces within a single person and and and, and it's a reminder of of who you could be and you you can find out who you should be it's actually this and this is something quite mysterious i believe and and part of the proof let's say that we exist in a world of value your conscience tells you who you should be now that doesn't mean that necessarily that it's infallible but People wrestle with their conscience. You know, there isn't anyone. I've never met anyone who is, you know, a, I'm not, I'm narcissists accepted, yeah, let's say. Yeah. People are generally tormented by their conscience. And the reason for that is that they're not, they're deviating from the path that is their destiny. I mean, and if you don't think that, well, then what do you think? What do you think that conscience is? I mean, I've asked my classes repeatedly, do you have a little voice in your head that tells you when you've done something wrong or you're about to or a feeling? And they all, they all 
immediately agree with that. No one finds that a foreign concept. And so if you don't know who you are, your conscience will remind you when you're no, or sorry, if you don't know who you could be, your conscience will remind you when you deviate. And then you can start to attend to that. Think, well, look, I'm actually ashamed when I do mm -hmm. this. I should stop unless I want to be ashamed all the time. It looks like I should stop. And then maybe you stop doing that and, and then your conscience objects to something else and maybe you stop doing that. And as that happens, you start to develop a vision of who you could be. And the chapter indicates it, 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 uh, it looks at symbolic representations. It's an examination of a certain symbolic representation of the ideal. And so it's my attempt to um, assess tradition for what it can tell us about what the ideal human being might be like. And the ideal human being is the person who forthrightly upholds the traditions of the culture and forges a way into the unknown. We, we went through that and, um, and pulls new information in and builds, rebuilds himself and the world. And that's who you could be. And now the the, the, the difficulty comes in figuring out how to do that within the confines of your own life. So in some sense, that's how to bring the divine to earth. Mm -hmm. There's this divine pattern, but it's, it's general. See, this is one of the mysterious things about Christianity that's so remarkable about it is that there's, there's, an, there's the, 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 the Christ that's eternal, the word of God say, so that's, that's a representation of something absolutely transcendent, but it's married to the particulars of one particular time and space. And obviously, um, critics of Christianity regard that as one of its major flaws, you know, that there's this idea of God, who is a carpenter in some out of the way place, in some out of the way time. But you're someone in an out of the way place at a particular time and place. And for, for you, what that means is that for you to make contact with the highest of values, you have to bring that down to your particulars and figure out how you do that. It's going to be a way that no one else does it because you're the only one that's you. And, but you can, you can aim at something, aim at something. And you aim at something and that will shape you as you move towards it. And then your aim will change, you'll move. But that doesn't matter. It gets you going. And you'll be molded across time more and more into the person you could be. Can, can you talk about that just from a personal perspective as someone that I've seen do it? I mean, I, 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 that's what I saw you do every night. You would take your, your intellectual um, curiosity to, to the end of where it would go. Sometimes you would get off stage and, and say to me, oh, you know, I, I took that as far as I could tonight. And then the next night you would go a little bit further with it or a little bit further. And I knew there were moments because we did so many shows, I knew when you were a little past where you would want to go. And then I could see you come back. But can you talk about what that was like for you in terms of your life, how you felt, how time felt, how the relationship with the audience felt when, when you're, well, when you're doing with, it right? Because I feel like people well, don't know that. When you're doing it right, what does it feel like? Today and I drank a lot. I, I came from this little town in northern Alberta and like many little towns, especially in northern Canada, the alcohol overuse is de rigueur, you know, it's, it's, and so um, I noticed when I was in my early 20s that the only time I really regretted what I had done was when I was drinking. Now, it was also interfering with me writing because I couldn't concentrate well enough if I was hungover, but I also couldn't really concent, I couldn't, I couldn't tolerate the emotional strain of what I was writing about when I was hungover. It was too, I couldn't handle being on the edge because I destabilized my nervous system.